What a performance last night in Mexico City on Monday Night Football as the San Francisco 49ers were outright dominant against the Arizona Cardinals. And in my opinion, they showed on Monday Night Football in front of a worldwide audience with that game being international that San Francisco is capable of representing the NFC in the Super Bowl because they really dominated in all phases. I understand that San Francisco has put together three consecutive wins against inferior opponents, but it's the eye test that they're passing right now. And with the way that this offense is playing since the acquisition of Christian McCaffrey as one of the more high-powered offenses in the National Football League, if they continue to find their footing and have that momentum, no team is going to want to take on the Niners come playoff time. So if you love seeing San Francisco dominate and end the Arizona Cardinals season, it's a victory Tuesday. I want you to hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. And we have to start here. Give credit where credit is due. Jimmy Garoppolo, folks, is balling right now. And whether you like him or you're a Jimmy G detractor, you have to admit that right now he's playing really good football and some of the best football of his career. Over the last three, four games, I think that Garoppolo has gone on one of the best stretches that we've ever seen in the Bay Area for him, respectively. And what I like about Jimmy G right now over the last month He's playing clean football and not turning the ball over. He has a really good feel for the pocket. We've seen him have those instincts where he sees the pocket break down and he's able to make a play somewhere downfield. Two weeks ago, pocket broke down, rolled to his right, found Ray Ray McLeod. Last night, a couple of instances in which the pocket broke down, the play designs from Kyle Shanahan were elite. So I like that pocket feel from Garoppolo. He just seems to be playing like a confident quarterback right now. He's playing the role of distributor and that's what he has to do. Be an old school point guard. Be that pass first point guard who distributes the football and gets the rock out to all of the weapons who are littered across the field and rely on Kyle Shanahan to draw up some of those great plays. He's accurate, decisive, and he's been one of the best and most elite quarterbacks on the money downs. Jimmy G nearly flawless on third downs, and that really bodes well come playoff time. Last night against Arizona, is Cliff Kingsbury now on the hot seat? Probably. They fired their offensive line coach after he ran into an incident on Saturday night in Mexico City. That franchise in shambles right now, and Garoppolo helped further that against a divisional rival. 20 of 29, 228, a near perfect quarterback rating of 131.9, and he threw four touchdowns through the air. Two to George Kittle, two to Brandon Ayuk, and that caused his teammates to get jacked up about what Jimmy G did. And Debo Samuel saying this after the game, actually on Tuesday morning, Himmy Guap. Well, right now, over the last month, Jimmy Garoppolo has been Himothy with the way that he's playing. And not many people out there can pull off a pink suit outside of Jimmy GQ. You know that saying out there, you look good, you feel good, and right now Jimmy G is looking good like he always does, and he's feeling good on the football field as well, playing very good football for this Niners offense. And one of his new teammates, Christian McCaffrey, did talk about that after the game, saying, Jimmy G, such a talented quarterback. He doesn't get enough credit in my eyes. He's a great leader. He's super smart. He can make any throw, and he's just a great guy to be around. And over his last four games, this is where Jimmy G has really elevated his play. Completion percentage, truly elite at 71.4%. He's thrown for more than 1,000 yards in those four games, which is really impressive. Eight touchdowns to just one interception. Average yards per completion and attempt, really good for him. 8.45 on the average yards per attempt number and a quarterback rating over the last month of 115.7. That's up there with some of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And last night against Arizona, I went to bed. I thought about this when I woke up. I was like, damn, that was really an impressive performance for San Francisco because I thought that that was a complete team effort. Mitch Wisnowski was dropping dimes as a punter. Jimmy Garoppolo was playing really well. George Kittle and Debo Samuel look like vintage George Kittle and Debo Samuel. And Brandon Ayuk, who we're going to talk about around the corner, continues to be one of the most underrated wide receivers in the NFL. And that Niners defense shut down Arizona. Really, from the second half on, they were just so good. And that's the performance that we've been waiting for. This is why I projected the Niners to have a shot to win the NFC in the lead-up to the 2022 season, because they have premier guys on both sides of the ball. Trent Williams answered some of the internet critics 
with that game and that performance against Arizona, a career best performance against the run and against the pass. He was the highest graded player on the field last night for both teams. And George Kittle had said, look, you know, this is an all-around performance, and I believe that we can make a run. That's exactly what he said. We're definitely capable to go on a run. We just won three straight. Our defense has played at an incredibly high level, not giving up points in the second half for multiple games in a row. And our offense, we've scored when we got in the red zone. That was big for us, and that was one of my biggest keys to the game. Turn those drives into seven, not three. More from Kittle. We made plays outside the red zone. They were explosive last night as well. Scored touchdowns, and that's been huge for us because that's one thing that's limited limited us as an offense, and that's put us in bad positions just because we've had to kick so many field goals. And if the Niners are able to be a more efficient offensive unit, that's when they become extremely dangerous. If they're scoring touchdowns and not field goals and capitalizing in the red zone on top of being explosive through the air and on the ground, how do you stop this team when the defense is giving up less than 20 points per game and they're atop many rankings across the NFL for defenses out there? And what was also pretty notable for the Niners on Monday night, from the second quarter to the fourth quarter, did it feel like San Francisco, everything was working? Well, it was. They scored on six of seven drives over that three-quarter span from the second to the fourth. If you're subscribed to the Niners Report, this is what I want you to do right now. I want you to type bang bang for the Niner gang in the comment section. We were able to pick up about 400 new subscribers during our watch party for that game in Mexico City. Up next, 68,000 subscribers around the corner, 70K. Let's get there. If you want free daily videos on the Niners, news rumors and analysis, lock us in right now. Now, San Francisco 49ers Report is presented by Established Titles. You can save an extra 10% off for the perfect holiday gift if you use the code chat at EstablishedTitles.com slash chat. Established Titles, a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. It's a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds, lords, and ladies in English. You can buy these title packs, which give you at least one square foot of dedicated land with a unique plot number right here at this private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and that comes with an official certificate with a crest. They plant a tree with every order and work with global charities, one tree planted, and trees for the future to support global reforestation efforts. I am now called Lord Chase Senior. I have land over there, and that comes with a plaque, and if the first 200 people purchasing a title pack do it right away, you'll be within a few minutes of walking distance from me. If you want to become a lord or a lady, then we can build our own 49ers Report Kingdom. This is the best and most unique last-minute gift. Established Titles is actually running a massive holiday sale with Black Friday coming up with discounts up to 80% off. Plus, if you use the code chat at EstablishedTitles.com slash chat, you save an extra 10% off. We will put that link in the comment section. We'll put that link in the description of this video. More takeaways from this game on Monday Night Football. Signs of life from some key players on this roster who are making a lot of money right now and into the future. Of course, it's Debo Samuel and George Kittle. They had been underwhelming up to this point, but both popped with vintage play. Let's first talk about Kittle here. A lot of talk about him being washed. I didn't think that was the case because when I've watched him this year, he's still bulldozing defenders. He's still picking up yards after the catch. The only issue with him, he's been used primarily as a blocker and not enough in the past game, but Kyle Shanahan relied on him as a playmaker last night and he was able to create some separation and pick up yards after the catch looking like that old school Kittle the best all around tight end in the NFL four catches 84 yards two touchdowns on six targets and both of those touchdowns highlight real worthy as for Debo Samuel had a lot of production catching the football with seven grabs for 59 his touchdown coming on that reverse play in which he displayed that acceleration that made him truly special last year, that made him a first-team All-Pro. And that's what you want to see coming down this stretch run from key players like George Kittle as well as Debo Samuel. If they play at an All-Pro caliber level on top of Christian McCaffrey being that Swiss Army knife and Brandon Ayuk having a breakout performance and Spencer Burford, Aaron Banks not surrendering a sack this year as well as Trent Williams continuing to play just dominant football at the that left tackle spot on top of the defense. And if the special teams gets better, this team going to be a straight-up handful. Debo 
Whoa, it was great to see him cooking last night in Mexico City. So let me pose this question. It is our poll question for today's show as well as our pinned comment. So make sure you answer that. Can the Niners win the NFC? Let me know. W for win, L for lose. Can San Francisco represent the NFC in Glendale for the Super Bowl coming up in February? Want to round out with this. Aerial attack Ayuk. It's time to give Brandon Ayuk his flowers. Brandon Ayuk is playing excellent, excellent football right now. And I've continued to say this over the last couple of weeks, and I hope you've been subscribed to hear it. Brandon Ayuk is one of the most underrated and under-talked about wide receivers in the NFL. Some people might think this statement is crazy, but from a route running and consistency standpoint, picking up yards after the catch, I would rather have Brandon Ayuk than C.D. Lamb. And he's putting together a career year right now. Up to this point in his NFL career, since being a first-round pick out of Arizona State, he's been so close to breaking that 1,000-yard receiving mark threshold. I think this is the year in which he does it because right now, with the Niners at 6-4, 66 targets, 46 catches, 587 yards, so he's on pace to do just that. He's become the Niners' number one wide receiver over the last month and change, five touchdowns. And over the last five games, this is really where Brandon Ayuk has been playing his best football, and he ain't in the doghouse any longer. 39 catches, 29 uh, 39 targets, excuse me, 29 catches for 350 yards, 12 yards per catch, and all of his touchdowns coming over the last five games, including two last night. And this guy continues to be one of the cleanest, one of the more technical route runners in the NFL. On his first touchdown, go back and watch the replay. He crossed the defender and the opposing cornerback up like an Allen Iverson crossover back in the day. It was straight up filthy. Ayuk has been awesome. If you think he's been awesome, spam the comment section with LGB. Let's go, Brandon. He is certainly making himself some money so far this year. Got to talk about the defense now. We'd be remiss if we didn't. The Niners' pressures against the Cardinals. How about this? Charles Amenehu leading the way with eight pressures against Colt McCoy and Trace McSorley last night. Nick Bosa had five. Drake Jackson tallied two. Jordan Willis, another really good game. Coming off an injury last week, I thought he was really good. He was once again pretty solid. Talano Hufonga had one playing in the box. Fred Warner Kevin Gibbons, Hassan Ridgeway, T.Y. McGill, who got activated, and Kerry Hyder also tallying pressures against the Cardinals. Before we hop on out of here for this segment, greatly appreciate everybody for tuning in. If you want to interact with me, hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at Chase underscore Senior. Shoot me a DM, shoot me a selfie of you watching the show. If you have a question for me, hit me up. I love interacting with the faithful.